Good evening, Inspire Beauty. Happy Monday. This is actually the first call, the first Zoom of 2018. Uh, I haven't spoken to you guys in almost a month now in a Zoom setting like this, so I am excited to dive into what we're talking about tonight, which is something that's kind of been on my heart lately, which is falling in love with this process. And we're going to dive into what that really looks like, but honestly, and I'm certain that every person on this call can admit to at some point, at somewhere in their business, whether it was the day they signed up or the day they joined a challenge group or the day they started following whoever their upline is, that something was like really shiny and sparkly and exciting. And then at some point also, that same nostalgia wore off. And you realized, okay, wait a second. Like I actually, I'm gonna do something. I gotta do some work. So we're gonna talk about that tonight because that is very, very real. So let me share a screen. I'm so happy to see all of you guys on tonight. Make sure that you're using that chat uh, with questions, comments, concerns, anything. Um, actually, I need to, I need to stop share because I gotta mute everyone real quick in case other people pop on. Mute all. Cool. All right, let's come back to it. So tonight we're talking about falling in love with the process, but prior to doing that, let's do a couple announcements. So Summit for 2018, which is in Indianapolis, Indiana, it is in June of this summer. And um, for the month of January, they've reduced the price of the ticket to 145. Guys, I didn't even spend 145 on my Summit ticket when I purchased it way back right after last year's summit and so this is a steal now the only stipulation with this ticket is it is non-transferable and it's non-refundable but it's only 145 dollars you guys and i really 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 deep in my core and my heart believe that when you get around the people who are in the trenches with you you will start to fall in love with the process a lot more because you'll be so inspired by other people's ups and downs in their journey as an entrepreneur and as a CEO of their own business, that you'll realize that you're not really all that alone. And so the process doesn't seem so, uh, it's not so bad because you know there's other people doing it too. The other thing I want you to keep in the top uh, forefront of your mind is that Team Cup is coming back this February. This Team Cup, I believe, is five people per team. Uh, the registration is going to be happening next week, I think. So start thinking, like, who would you want to have on your Team Cup? How many Team Cups can we get representing Inspire Beauty? Last February, we had two Team Cups. So I know we can at least have two Team Cups, if not three. What if we had three Team Cups happening in February? I've got an entire a coach training group that I'm going to, that I'm prepping, it's in the works right now, that is all centered around the four vital behaviors, your invitations and your sharing on social media, the proof of the products, um, your personal development, and that recognition one where you're celebrating other people's success, you guys. And that's gonna be kind of like the platform for everyone involved in Team Cup. It's going to be kind of like a, a coach training as well as a, a way for us to advance our businesses all together. So that's coming soon. So do not miss out on your chance to be a part of that Team Cup. If you're watching this and you're like, Brittany, I have no idea what Team Cup even stinking is, don't worry. By the end of February, you'll totally know what it is and you'll be a better coach for it, okay? Just trust and believe that Summit, Team Cup, those are things that you should be wanting to join, okay? Even if it's scary. And the last thing I wanna announce, guys, is that starting next week on Monday, I'm doing a very quick two-week comeback coach training. So anyone who has kind of fallen off the wagon in your, in your business or you've kind of hit hit a wall or a plateau, or you just feel like you need a little bit of a kick in the pants, we're gonna do that for two weeks together. We are going to nail down the vitals, we are going to fall in love with the process, and we are going to start working on the actions it takes to get to the goals that you want. Okay, we all have goals. Next week, we're going to talk all about goal setting. And we're even going to talk about how to take action on those goals later in the month. But for the time being, if you set goals for yourself, there, there are some things that you're going to have to do. The rubber has to meet the road, and you have to put in 
the work. So let's get into the content for tonight. First, I wanna remind you guys that your struggle that you're feeling is absolutely normal. There are so, like, I, I don't wanna like diminish the way you're feeling, but it's not, you're not the only one in all of Beachbody land that is nervous to send an invite. You're not the only one in all of, <coughs> excuse me, in all of Beachbody that uh, has disconnected from the team at some point. You're not the only one in all of Beachbody that has run a challenge group and it failed or flopped or it just wasn't as good as what you envisioned it to be. You are not the only one that hears no. You're not the only one that doesn't get likes on your picture or comments. You're not the only one who loses followers. You're not the only one, you guys. Your struggle that you're feeling is normal and it is a part of the process, okay? Now, does it mean that it's not easy to, like, that it's easy to just brush it off when it happens? Maybe not. With time and experience and personal development, it definitely becomes easier to just say, okay, moving on. Um, but the reality is, guys, whatever you dreamed when you walked into this business or when you walked into a challenge group or you entered in, into Inspire Beauty or whatever you even freaking dreamed two weeks ago when the new year started or a week ago when the new year started, those dreams don't just vanish. You can cancel a credit card on beachbody.com and you can ghost your upline coach and you can remove yourself and just stop responding to somebody, but your dreams don't go away. You can push someone away. You can, you can remove yourself, but those dreams will stay on your heart and they will resurface over and over and over again. So just because you failed at something or you messed up or you missed the mark or you didn't do what you had originally set out to do. That doesn't mean that your goals then just have to go away. They don't. I mean, who said that? Think about our challengers. If our challengers told us, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds this year. And you're like, cool, we can do that. And then they fell off the wagon in January. Are you going to say, you know what? You probably should never set the goal to, set, to, to lose 10 pounds again because that's never going to happen. What? No, like they still have life to live. They still have time. Their heart is still beating. Their lungs still have air. Like their goals aren't gone. They can still pick it up and get back into it and start from square one and just fall back in love with that process. You guys have the ability to determine the results that you're going to get. You have the ability. I really want that to sink in. You have the ability. Your upline doesn't have the ability to make your dreams a reality. Your best friend doesn't have the ability. Your husband doesn't have it. Like you are the one that has the ability to determine the results. You guys, Charlie was gone for a week. He came back late, late, late last night. I was already asleep and he needed some rest because of how late he arrived. And I could have easily, easily stayed in bed and just snuggled him this morning because, you know, I mean, who cares if I get up when my alarm goes off? Like, who cares if I don't m make it to the national wake up call and watch it live? Like, who would know? Nobody would know that. No one would really know if I didn't do my workout or my business till later in the day. They wouldn't know that, but I would know that. And my results that I want this year, what I am working towards, I am not giving it my all, I'm not giving it my best. And so it was my choice this morning that when my alarm went off, I said, I'm getting up. I made myself some coffee. I let Frankie and Charlie do their thing. And I got to work on what I need to do. So you've got to learn how to settle into this daily grind, okay? I want you to think of it like, um, like learning a new instrument. So I don't know, like we do have a lot of musicians uh, as part of our team, but I played flute. If you don't know this, I played flute growing up. I was a musician first, and then I was a performer, color guardy, dancer second. But um, I learned flute. And when I first got my flute, I remember the day. Like, I will not forget the day that at my elementary school, they were having a band night. So if anybody wanted to join band, now our band in elementary school was – you had to be in fifth or sixth grade, so our elementary went K through six. You had to be in either fifth or sixth grade. Now I'm drawing a blank. Did it go to sixth grade? Or was it fourth and fifth? I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter, guys. Anyway, band, because of budget cuts, was not a class that you took in my school. If you wanted to play an instrument, you had to get your butt up, and you had to walk to school before school started. And this is elementary school. We're not talking high school. Like, oh, I, this is my goal. This is what I really want to do. I'm going to get up early for it. No, like, I'm a kid. I'm literally a child. Okay? 
remember I grew up in Michigan, so it is snowy there. But I'll never forget the day that I picked out my instrument. It was like a nighttime thing. Like you come to the school at night, it was like a little instrument fair and the, the local music shop was there and they had all the instruments out and you could rent them. You could rent them. And most of my friends rented their instruments because it was like just kind of one of those low investment processes, you know what I mean? But no, my mom bought me a brand new shiny flute, a really nice flute. And she bought it for me that day. And I strutted home from my elementary school. I lived like, uh, just down the block from my elementary school. And I strutted home carrying that stupid little flute case, like feeling like I was some hot shit. Like I felt good about my life, okay? It was so new. It was so shiny. But then, I've, but then the next day I had to wake up and I had to walk all by myself. It was still dark out in the snow to school, uphill both ways. You know what I'm talking about? Like that, right? Okay, I sound like my grandma now. But I had to do, I had to do the work. I had to get to school. I had to, when we got to, you know, our music class, we sat down and we learned how to play one note. Like, okay, everybody learned the fingering for a B flat. Like, okay, everybody learned the fingering for this. And then I was like, well, when are we going to play some music? Like, when are we going to do this thing? So it, it wasn't fun. Like it was so new and shiny and exciting. And like, I saw my mom was a beautiful um, musician and my father's a beautiful musician and my brothers were musicians at the time. And I was the one that I was like, I'm going to do this too. Like, I want to play an instrument. I want to make music. And then all I could do was play these stupid B flat scales. Like that was so boring. And I had to do the work and I had to practice. And then I had to like have my mom sign off on how much time I was practicing. And, and she wouldn't lie. My mom would not lie because not only is she, was she a musician, and so it was important for her to like hear me have my practice time, she also was a teacher, so she wouldn't lie to another teacher if I didn't actually do the work I was supposed to do. So my mom made sure that I practiced the minutes that I was supposed to practice, and it sucked. Like, it sucked. It was work. But I got really good at flute. In elementary school, in middle school, in high school, I was first chair. I decided not to go on and play flute in college at all because I ended up enjoying performing and dancing a lot better than, um, than flute. And that kind of wore off and I couldn't do drum corps by playing flute. So that was kind of like a big deal for me. But um, I was really good. I was, I was one of the best ones in my school. I would go to uh, festivals and I would win and I had medals and I felt good about the success but behind that set success you guys was a daily grind that i had to learn how to settle into okay so gut check time when the novelty of a new and you insert whatever it is you want to insert a new group maybe new year same me you're like oh yes i'm so excited for a brand new group maybe this 80 day obsession launch party oh i'm so excited for a new group okay when that new group wears off and you actually, like week one is done and now you actually have to get down to work. Are you still there? What about a training? What if you sign up to do uh, the training or the team cup in February or you've signed up to do a team training of some sort? Maybe this uh, comeback coach one that I'm, I'm starting up next Monday. And you actually, you're excited about it. You sign up. Yeah, I'm going to do it. But then it takes work. Are you going to be there? What about a new program? 80 day obsessions coming out. It's going to be super exciting on Monday. Oh, I guarantee on Tuesday, it's still going to be really exciting, but we'll probably be a little sore Wednesday. Cool. Okay. This is, yep. It's exciting. But what happens when we get into phase three, not just phase one, not just phase two, but the third phase, the third month of 80 day obsession and that novelty of it has worn the heck off. And all you're left with is the work of pressing play every day. Are you still going to be in the group? And those are the gut checks you have to give yourself, yeah? So your struggle, you guys, is so normal. But I want you to remember this. Success is never final. So again, it's that whole idea of like, your goals don't have to end today just because you messed up. That doesn't mean you don't have to have goals anymore. Your success is never final. I'm constantly working on the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. That's our humanity. That's our gift as human beings, right? Like there's a difference between Frankie who literally wash, rinse, repeat every day of his dog life and, and Brittany, a living, breathing human being that has the choice to make herself better every single day and get better and push herself and set higher, better, cooler goals than the last one she achieved, right? 
And you also have to remember that failure is never fatal. No one on this team has died from a no to a challenge group. No one on this team, to my knowledge, has died from going to summit. No one on this team has died when a challenge group didn't go the way they wanted it to go. No one on this team has died when they stopped. Do you get my point, right? Failure isn't fatal, guys. It is part of the process, and it's your courage, your boldness, your bravery that counts. And I consider you, if you are somebody who shows up daily to the ugly, unsexy, like mundane, boring process of be being a successful coach, if you are truly engaged in that process, man, you're courageous. Man, you are courageous. You are a hero in my book. So I kind of want to talk with you guys about some of the things like in my journey where I learned how to fall in love with the process. And I think the first one for me was workouts. When I started Beachbody, I had already done Insanity and I did it alone. I bought it on Amazon. It sat on a shelf for a while. Like I did not, um, I wasn't in a challenge group. I didn't have a coach, nothing like that, right? And I didn't document my journey. Didn't need to, right? But when I signed up as a coach, I got a challenge pack. I got T25 challenge pack, signed up as a coach at the same time, and T25 had just come out. But at the same time, I was also training for a half marathon, and then right after that half marathon, I had to go right into my marathon training. So my half marathon was in October, so I didn't do T25 because I had a very strict routine I was sticking to. And then right after my half marathon in October of 2014 when I signed up, my marathon was February of 2015. Oh my gosh, no, wait, what year did I sign up? 2013, it doesn't matter. Anyway, the following February, a couple months later was my marathon, yeah? So I didn't do beach body program at all. I drank my shake and I talked about Shakeology, but I never did a program. Occasionally I'd press play on something. Now remember, this is old school. I didn't have access to everything. I either had my T25 DVDs or I had my Insanity DVDs and that was it. I didn't have access to anything else, guys. Remember that. So I didn't, it wasn't like, oh, I can just do challenge du jour today because I'm marathon training. Like people have it good now. You know what I'm saying? Like if there's like, there's an app for that. But Back when I started, there wasn't. And so all I had was T25, which was too intense during my marathon training on my joints, too much impact on my joints, or I had insanity, which was way too much impact on my joints. So I just didn't do a beach body program. My very first, so I'm going to talk to you about some of the workouts that made me start to fall in love with the process. And this is why I tell you to press play and follow a workout calendar to a T because there's power in that. And I say this coming from a place of someone that didn't, that refused to do that because I was hard headed. And I said, I'm marathon training. I'm not push, I'm not pressing play. But in February, after my race was over, 21 day fix came out and I purchased the DVDs. And that was the very first program I did from start to finish. And that program, 21 day fix, I will always remember 21 day fix as the program that made me fall in love with lifting weights all of a sudden it, it like light weights like all of a sudden i'll never forget one day i was in subway with a friend and i was like i just looked at my arms i was in a tank top and i just thought wow i've never been able to like lean out and tone my arms like i did like I'm doing with this program. 21 Day Fix was the first program that I put excuses aside. And when people said, hey, you want to go to the bar tonight? Or hey, you want to hang out? And I hadn't pressed play yet. The answer was no, because I owed it to myself to finish that program. So that was my first one. My second program that I did start to finish was T25. And I will never forget the day that I put my side by side before and after together. Charlie, we were not dating at the time. We were just simply friends. But he happened to be around because I would get up early. This is when I taught drum corps. Um, I would get up an hour to two hours before everyone else every single day to work my business before drum course started. That was a sacrifice I made. And so when I got up early, no one was usually up, but Charlie was up occasionally because of at, being on admin and things like that. Okay. So when, um, when I was putting my side by side together to post on social media, Charlie happened to be there. And I was like, dude, come here and look at this. You have to see this. Like I am blown away at what I did. Like, I didn't even know, like, when I looked in the mirror, I couldn't even tell that I had done that, but I did, and I was so proud. So that was, like, another little conviction. That's, that was belief being instilled in me that, yeah, this process sometimes sucks. Sean T sucks. Like, man, you suck, Sean T. You really suck. But I kind of like 
this side by side. Like, this is pretty cool that pressing play for 25 minutes a day actually worked. Who would have thought? Fast forward to the end of the summer. I decided to do Shaleen Extreme. I, again, no bot existed. So I bought the challenge pack. And I, I bought the challenge pack disclaimer because at that time, Charlie and I started dating and I put him as a coach on Inspire Beauty and purchased a challenge pack to get him started. So he got Shakeology, he got Shaleen Extreme, but I actually got the Shaleen Extreme. So got my DVDs and Shaleen Extreme was the first one that I was like, holy crap, lifting heavy weights doesn't actually make you bulk. Like I was so worried I'd look like a dude or like one of those, like, I don't know, like a bodybuilder. Like I just didn't want that body. I didn't want to look like that. And Shalene Extreme instilled the belief in me that lifting heavy doesn't translate to bulking up. And so I'll never forget that. I'll never forget new product launches. When Pio came out, I mean, I was like freaking fangirling over Shalene Johnson. Um, when 21 Day Fix Extreme came out, I had already done the first one. So I was so ecstatic to like take myself to the next level. Um, when, let's see. Court of Force came out. Man, I was so nervous because I didn't think I'd like kickboxing only to find out that I absolutely adored that program. Now with 80 Day Obsession coming out, I am so excited that every day for 80 days, we are literally going through the transformation with the cast. This has never been done before, you guys. We're going through a transformation alongside the cast. There are no edits. So if Autumn is struggling, we will see it. If someone in the back is struggling, we will see it. And I'm so excited for that because it's, it makes it so real. Um, I got excited when BOD came out. Why? Because I spent hundreds of dollars on DVDs over the course of years for them to now just sit like ancient artifacts, honestly. Um, but when that came out, that just opened up such a different platform for our customers and the results they could get. So do you, I hope you can hear the excitement that's in my heart, deep within me about Every, like, I can remember these, these processes like it was yesterday. Now, you know what's funny, though? Did I tell you about anything that sucked about those processes? Did I tell you, like, ugh, my knee was totally aching on day two of 21 Day Fix, or ugh, I couldn't breathe in T25 on Friday, Friday fight, or whatever. Like, did I talk about that just now? No, I can't remember that. That's, like, in the moment, you guys. But you know what I remember? I remember these key points in my life that made me a better person. Brittany, that they transformed, not my outside, you guys. Yeah, that's transformed. That's so cool. I love it. But they transformed my heart. They transformed my belief. They transformed my confidence. Like that is what we're looking for. And so I share my transformation often, often. These are some of the latest ones that I've shared, but this one, even in the bottom left corner, I shared this weekend, guys, it has like over a hundred people and so much engagement uh, with this. And I didn't think it had much engagement, quite honestly, at all, because it was the weekend, but it did. And, um, and I didn't talk about my fitness journey necessarily. I talked about being a coach and the transformation of my finances over the course of four years and how four years ago, people didn't believe in me. And they're like, eh, it's just a scam. It's some pyramid scheme thing. It, it, you'll never be successful. Was, you know, you're not going to be lucky enough. You won't be one of those people. And then I worked hard for four years. And you know what? I created my own luck, right? So continue guys. I, I, I can't stress enough how sticking to a program and enduring that process will help you to start falling in love with the process. So if you haven't pressed play in a while, or if you've pressed play and it's just haphazard, like I pressed play on Monday and then I pressed play on Friday and then I did this one that day. And then I thought I'd experiment with this one. I encourage you to really, really dig deep and say, I'm going to commit myself to this. And if it's 80 day obsession, do it with us. Like commit right now that you're going to do it with us. If it's not 80 day obsession, print off whatever stinking calendar it is and start sharing that process. Okay. Because it's also important that you're sharing that journey, the good, the bad, the ugly. So I kind of went over a lot of this, but what being a product of the product means to me, you guys, it's not, again, it's not like I do my workout, I drink my shake. I do my workout, I drink my shake. Like that is, that's a daily task that I do to check off. But over the course of four years or 40, we're at 40 months now for me. Over the, does that even make sense? 40, 12 times four would be 40, whatever. Anyway, it's been a long day if you can't tell. Um, but over the course of all these years, <laughs> it wasn't like, okay, 
this, these are just check marks. It's actually transformed me. And now I can look back and I'm like, wow, I endured that process. I did the, um, the mundane stuff. I did, what did I say? Uh, that, that daily grind, right? I settled into that. Okay. Every day I make my shake. Okay. Every day I do this. Um, and that's what being a product of the product as a checklist sort of idea has now transformed my life in ways that like starting at the start line, I never would have imagined at the very start of my journey. I didn't, I never wanted to lift weights. Like I said, for fear of bulking, but being a product of the product and it wasn't right away. That was about a year into my beach body coaching journey that I realized, huh, lifting heavy weights doesn't make me bulk up. Cool. I want to teach that to other women. That was a year into my business that I finally removed that from my thought process. Guys, I was a closet fast food junkie, meaning I would not eat. I would like, I would be around my friends and we'd all be very petty and we couldn't eat because we didn't want to get fat. Right. And so I wouldn't eat. We'd drink though, of course. Like what is, I don't even understand. It doesn't make sense, but we would drink. We just wouldn't eat. And, um, and so we wouldn't eat because we didn't, we, you know, I wouldn't be the one to order a hamburger while everybody else was sitting there just kikiing. So what would I do? I would be so hungry. I would be so hungry and I would be so honestly drunk probably because I didn't eat anything with the stuff I was drinking that every night when I would be on my way home, I would stop at fast food and I did not tell anyone. I mean, I would eat it like I'm telling you guys this and it's so embarrassing, but like I'd eat it really fast in my car and throw it away before I even came in the house. So it wouldn't be in my home trash can. Or when I start, when I was living alone and I didn't care because nobody saw my host, my house trash can, um, I would lay in bed and like eat it on my chest. You guys, like, I'm kidding you not right now. Like I would like eat my like McDonald's on my chest. Am I more attractive to all of you right now than I've ever been? I hope so. Um, but that was me. And then, so I get like, you need to go get fast food. I get the person who eats fast food because they're like starving and they don't know what any better way to do it. And I hated myself every time I did it, but being on Shakeology for four plus years now has showed me that I can feel myself differently. I don't have to be in that same place in my life. I never ate breakfast. I would starve myself. You guys, I just talked about that. All of my meals when I started this process contained meat over the course of four years, I have slowly phased meat out of my diet. Did I go in all in on day one and I started lifting heavy and I was only drinking Shakeology and I was eating 100% clean and I never missed a workout and my posts were, no, like I had to fall in love with the process that sometimes I failed, but I got, every time I failed or I had a setback or I had a moment where I went through McDonald's drive through I'd say, okay, this is the last time I'm going to do this. Okay. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't like the way I feel right now, right? And I learned from listening and being in tune with myself. Being a product of the product allows me to be in tune with myself with, you know, all things health, fitness related. And I had zero nutrition knowledge, you guys, when I started. I was reminding Jessica earlier today, we're not nutritionists. So if somebody's trying to get you to like be a nutritionist for them, they're knocking on the wrong door. That's not our job. Our job is to support somebody in whatever nutrition choices they need help making. Now, does that mean that I just don't learn about nutrition? No. Over the course of four years, I've learned a lot about nutrition. I've tried different things and I've experimented with food. I used to think lean cuisines and 100 calorie packs and putting sweetener instead of sugar was the light, the way, and the truth to getting healthy. Now I know that that is so not true. Like, that's not nutrition. I walk past lean cuisine and I just like, my gut sinks. Like, oh my gosh, that is just processed crap. But when I first started as a coach and I was still teaching in my classroom, you better believe I was eating lean cuisines, but I've gotten better. So even if you're sitting here like eating a lean cuisine literally right now on the zoom and you're like, Oh God, Brittany, like <laughs> you just called me out. Understand that where you are today, if you fall in love with this process, you will start to get in tune with what serves you and what doesn't and what creates success and momentum in your journey. And you'll start to lean in towards that more than you lean in towards the things that are no longer serving you. The other thing um, that has completely changed my life is personal development. And I believe that it can change your life. This is a really long list. Um, and I'm going to read it because it is, I think it's important for you to hear this, but I want to read to you since I started and not every book is on here also because I couldn't get on my Kindle today because it had died and then I forgot to charge it, whatever. So um, this is just tangible physical books that I have on my shelf since I started GoPro, Compound Effect, Start, Quitter. You are a badass. You are a badass at making money. Mean girl. Uh, 
mastering your inner mean girl. The power of I am. I am that girl. Girl boss. Leaders eat last. Eat that frog. She means business. The universe has your back. H3 leadership. Entre leadership. The slight edge. The magic of thinking big. Get over your damn self. Gifts of imperfection. Big magic. Rock your network marketing business. Present over perfect. The seven habits of highly successful highly successful people go for no give and take the go giver the goddess revolution miracle morning five second rule 10x rule uninvited wild and free the happiness project eat pray love you can you will five love languages your beautiful heart the traveler's gift a million miles in a thousand years failing forward start with why developing the leader within you entrepreneurial roller coaster push those are just some of the ones i jotted down that i've read since i started as a coach and if we count that's about 50 books ish that I just rattled off. And if they each have an average about 200 pages of book guys, that's 10,000 pages of personal development that I've read over the course of four years. You cannot tell me that that won't change your life. Now in the grind, in the checklist, yeah, it can seem like it's another thing to do, but I'm not looking at today. I'm looking at what four years down the road is going to look like for me if I do that every single day. And so if you're only like, when I say I want you to fall in love with the process, please don't give yourself a, an end date or a quit date, right? Don't give yourself a, well, let's just see how this thing goes. Cause I can already tell you how this thing is going to go for you. It's not going to go so well. Fall in love with the process. When you fall down, you get back up. When you struggle, you get better. When you um, find yourself disconnected, you lean back in, right? Countless hours of personal development. And that's not even counting podcasts, team calls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a couple of final thoughts that I want to give you right now before we uh, wrap it up tonight is that first of all, if you're bored in this process, right? If you're bored with your challenge groups or you're bored with your social media or you're bored with the team or you're bored just with coaching, like if it's not shiny, remember my flute, it was super shiny, super cool, super awesome. And then what was it? It was work, right? After the shininess wore off, it simply was a flute that I had to practice. So if you're bored, if it feels boring, if it feels mundane, if it feels like not what you originally signed up for, everyone around you is bored with what you're doing too. Keep that in mind. If you're bored in your challenge group, so are your followers. If you're bored with your social media, so are your followers. If you feel like this is getting monotonous, maybe other people are thinking that too. So shake it up, change it up and make it fun. You have the power to do that. Okay. Remember that this business does take work. Embrace that. There is no one that has ever told you guys, you're going to get rich quick on inspire beauty. And if they did, like I please tell me who said that because like that doesn't happen. It takes work. But if you embrace it and every day you're tracking, 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 Remember, over time, what can happen? I showed you some examples of over time, the fire, the, I didn't start the guys. I started this business truly believing that I could potentially be part of a pyramid scheme. I was like half in, half out. Like, I don't really know what this thing is. Okay. Like I didn't know what this was. I started this business with so much disbelief about why I'm paying over a hundred bucks for a shake. Um, I started this business with this disbelief that if you press play in your living room, you're actually going to lose weight and chisel yourself. Probably not, but okay, whatever. Like I didn't have belief in what I was even doing. So I'm not asking, I'm not saying today, like if you don't have belief, you shouldn't be around, but I stuck it out. Every day I tracked. Every day I believed a little bit more in myself. Every day I listened a little bit more to my upline coach. Every day I tried something new. I worked. I was a student of my craft. I'm still a student of my craft. And so it takes work. Embrace it. But make it a point, you guys, to connect with your team. Because I think that that's the biggest, um, the biggest downturn for people is that when they disconnect, that I can already see what's going to happen when people start to disconnect. So make it a point. Like if you are not sharing on Inspire Beauty on a daily basis, why not? How are you going to be a leader for others if you're not practicing being a leader for our team, right? Make it a point to be on Zooms. Make it a point to get on national wake-up calls. Make it a point to listen to replays if you can't get onto them live because of work. Make it a point to understand that you are doing a part-time hustle. No one's expecting you to do a full-time job. So make it a point to plug in one hour a day. Remember what I said? I got up earlier than everyone else on staff so that I could get in my hour or two hours of beach body time before everything else was consumed, right? So figure out when that is for you. So here's a couple call to actions um, before I stop the share. I want you to reflect on your business. Where are you not embracing the work? I'll tell you for me, I haven't been embracing adding new friends. 
quite honestly, I've been struggling really hard in this department because I'm at a kind of at a turning point where the people that I used to uh, attract and try to connect with and add to my network, I'm kind of starting to shift away from that genre of people and not trying to connect to the same people um, and try expanding into more um, of like moms and Christian women and, and just kind of as I'm shifting as a human being, I'm kind of shifting my business and my niche with it. But in that process, it's not as easy as it used to be to just go bam, bam, bam. I'm going to friend request, friend request, friend request. And so I just don't do it. So where are you not embracing work? That, that was my truth. I'm owning it. Okay. And even today I owned it and I added friends to my network because I knew I needed, I knew that like, that's got to stop. Right. Share your own results guys. Remember back to these results up here and how I got to share a transformation. I want you, every single person who's on here should have a side by side tomorrow. I want you to not only post it on your page, but share it to the team page afterwards so that we can cheer you on. Okay. But I want you to post your results. Now, hear me out. If you're like Brittany, I have reversed my transformation. I love it. If you've reversed your transformation and you are not the same as you were a year ago because you fell off the wagon or you're not the same as you were two months ago because of the holidays or whatever, I want you to own that and I want you to share your reverse transformation. I've done it before. Where you share, this is where I was and look at how chiseled I was and look at how I fell off the wagon. But watch me because I'm getting back on. Don't you see some power in that? Like who the heck shares a reverse transformation? You're about to. You, my friend, are about to share that. And I triple dog dare you. Like for real, share your own results tomorrow. Talk about what you're about to have people watch you do this year and then do it. Reflect on your challenge groups, guys, or challenge groups that you're helping to participate in. What can be done differently? What can you do differently in the challenge groups? Maybe it's just showing up more, right? What um, can you do differently in terms of posting? And call to action, guys. Set a start date for your next challenge and start crafting posts that show how this process has impacted you in your life. And how showing up to this process has so much power, right? Okay. I'm going to stop the share. We have like no time left. Oh my gosh, so much chat. La la la. If anybody wants to unmute and say anything real quick. Sorry, I totally took up the whole time. I'm so sorry, guys. One of these days. I was first heard it and then I fell in love with Cordova. Yes, 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 yes. I know Mary loves Corda Force too. And it's so fun. Like when your clients find a program that they fall in love with, it's like, uh, it makes me happy, right? Because you're like, wow, like that, it changed their life, you know? It's so cool. All right, I'm going to snap a quick pic so everybody fix your face. <laughs> I like that Autumn says that in the, in the a little to us. Fix your face. Three, two, one. Okay, anybody need to say anything? questions, comments. All right. I love you guys. Mwah. I hope that sparks some fire in you. Let's fall in love with this process. We're all in it together. Uh, you're not alone. Your struggle is real. Lean on us for that support. And thank you guys for being on tonight. I'll talk to you on the team page. Bye-bye.